All right, if you made it this far, it's going to start getting a little bit more challenging. So great job for staying with me. And let's go to 2.3, list assignment of multiple variables. This is when it gets a little interesting, stuff that you may or may not know, right? So PowerShell allows uh, multiple assignments of variables. Um, and what that means is you can take things from another and put it into another, right? Rip things apart, split things up, put it into another spot, right? Imagine a box of Legos and it has like all types of things in it. You pull it out and you're kind of putting it into different other boxes, right? Remember, each one of these is a variable, okay? So each one of these is a variable, right? And each one might, each box might have different things. This one has a lot of things. This one has, and this one is splitting it. And then, right? So you want to just keep that in mind, right? Now I'm going to explain it as best as I can. But what we're going to do is, this is the gist. We're going to take this, we're going to then cut it up, right? We're going to cut it up right here by a period. That is what this is for. That is what that's for. We're cutting it. We're taking the input and splitting it. We're taking the input and we're splitting it. We're calling the method split, okay? So now that we call the method split, and it's split, what do you think is going to happen? We put it into, we split into three different parts. How do we call upon those parts? We have sort of a address or what we call index. This one is number zero, this is number one, and this is number two. This one is going to go over here. And then this one's going to go over here to number one. And two's going to go over here. Remember, I don't know why, but we start at zero. We always start at zero. Okay? So now that we know that, let's copy and paste this and see what happens. Okay? I'm going to press escape, press B, go below, and B, A, Z, call the variable, and bass. Right? Foo, bar, bass. Foo bar bass. Foo bar bass. Right? And if we go and input on top, mm, let's run this part. I'm going to run. Oh, I'm putting input. I got to specify the whole thing. Okay. Input equals this. And then we spit out the input. Foo bar bass. Foo bar bass and it has a period right we parts is the variable that split this up what do you think parts look like what do you think parts look like do you think it's uh like what do you think it looks like if you looked at the past tutorial is it a string what type is it is it a is it a number is it a array a ps object what do you think Let's find out. We're going to delete all this. We're going to look at parts. And it looks like an array, but let's make sure. We don't know. Let's make sure. Get type, parentheses. It's us. It's an array. So you're right. If you said array, you're right. Get a gold star. Parts dot get type. It's an array of strings. OK. Cool. Right? Now, now that you know all this and you know what kind of happened, you can even make it easier. You know, we don't want to make it, we don't want to have all that string, right? Let's just do it in one string. How do we do that? Well, remember what I said was this was what? This was zero, this was one, and this was two. Because you're doing it in the sequence, zero, one, two equals input dot split. So now, oh, oh shoot, sorry. So input dot split. I gotta work on that zoom. But yeah, so zero, one, two, 
And why is this? Why does it zoom over here? I want to zoom on the left. Anyways, all right. So again, zero, one, two, and now we do input split. We take the input and we're splitting it. So we take foo bar baz, right? And we want to split that input. We want to split that input. So it's going to be 0, 1, 2. So if we do this, that is a foo bar baz. And now we map it to foobar baz, those variables, right? Does that make sense? So we're going to do this. And let's look at the input. Oh, foo. OK, see? You don't even have to do it this way if you want. You don't have to do full bar baz. It might confuse if it, you know, if it looks the same, you could just do poo par paz. It'll work. When you look at poo, you get foo. When you look at par, you get bar. When you look at paz, you get baz. Okay? We're just mapping the structure, right, of how it was split of that period. We're splitting it by period, and then we split it, we put it into different areas or different parts. Part one goes into this, uh, part one goes into this guy, part two goes into this guy, and then part three goes here, okay? So it just shortens this and makes it a lot better, right? Don't need to do this, better to do this, okay? Now, it's gonna get a little, a little bit more complicated, but not too much. So now that we know input equals foo bar baz, let's talk about leftovers. A leftover means if you didn't specify enough variables, you, you didn't provide me enough variables. You only provided foo and leftover. You didn't provide anything else. You gave me two variables, but I'm splitting this, right? I'm splitting this bucket up. I'm sorry, I'm splitting this um, variable up. And I'm going to split into three different things, foo, bar, and baz. And I don't have enough things to put it in. I don't have enough boxes to put it in, right? So what do I do? Well, I'm just going to stick the first one. So number, uh, number one, right, will go over here. And number two and three, right? Those, which is um, bar and baz, is going to go into the leftover. As an, what do you think? As an array, right? As an array. Bar and baz goes here. So let's look at that. Let's run this and let's see what happens. So that runs. And as you can see, I kind of have this already built out, but I'm actually going to delete it. I'm going to explain it. So, all right. So what do you think happens? So let's break down the uh, code again. We say we're building that input. It has this string. And now we want to split that input and we want to stick one into here and two into here, okay? Then what I'm doing is for bar, I want leftover zero, and then baz, I want leftover one. You see, you see what's happening there? So because, mm, because number, because foo, went to here that's okay but did the but did the um did the bar variable or the baz variable get their stuff no bar is going to go into leftover and then baz is just going to go leftover too so 
we need to fix that. That's why you're specifying these other strings, right? Cool. So let's run it through it. Input. Mm -hmm. Run this. I don't know why that always happens like that. Let's see. All right. So we run this. And then we're going to then uh, split it, right? And now that we split it, let's look at what's in foo. So write host foo. And the reason I'm doing this is just so I want to say, you know, I want it to just have sort of a visual way to kind of show you who's in who. Input. And also kind of just, you know, use, uh, reuse sort of previous examples in the tutorial. Okay, so we delete this. And now we do that. We do right host again. And we do left over. Left over. Do you see what's... So again, we are splitting foobar baz. And then we are sticking it into different buckets. And let, now we're going to look at the output. Right? Foo bar baz, foo, and leftover gets bar baz. Now you see why I have to specify bar and, bar and baz up here to get those zero and ones? Because if I don't, bar and baz literally has nothing. Right? If I do this, Bar and Baz have, hmm, let me, let me clear it out. It probably had residual. Uh, B bar equals no, Baz equals no. Okay, so, so Bar and Baz has nothing, right? They didn't, we didn't call upon it. So now we enter this and we can now, Populate it. Does that make sense? And the reason, again, I'm using write host is because I can put this word, baz, you know, baz has this value. Like you can put anything, but it's just really a text and then the actual string. Okay. All right. I think that's it.